Hey, I am so excited to be with you today because I am talking about confidence. And what I mean by that is how you as a boss can be more confident. So I am excited because this is a topic that is needed. Uh, there are many expectations when it comes to leadership and managing people and part of that, a lot of that has to do with self-confidence because your people have to believe in you. So I am Dr. Heather Williamson with the Transformation Group and welcome back to the channel. All right, so let's talk about how to be a more confident or how to be more confident as a boss. So I always say that management is not for the weak and that is because when it comes to managing teams, you have got lots of different personalities, you've got lots of things that come into play, you've got to manage your time, you've got people knocking on your door, and you still have to get your job done. And confidence is a huge, huge asset if you have it. You can actually get things done and your people believe in you. They want to for you to be confident because they are expecting you to be leading them to success. And if you have a boss, well, you know what? You were in that role because you were great at what you did and you have the potential to do, to be a manager and to be a leader of a team. So the first thing that I want you to get out of your brain right now is that you are an imposter. The imposter syndrome does not exist here today. You are in your leadership role for a reason, and it's because you are gonna be great at it. So building that confidence, that self-confidence is what, what's needed, then let's do it right now. All right, so the one thing I want you to think about when it comes to self-confidence is that, you know, you've got a team of people that, like I said, are looking up to you. They want to know that you know what the heck is going on in the company. They want to know that you have the, the bandwidth to be able to meet their needs. And this is key. And this is a real challenge when it comes to brand new managers. I get it. I have worked with lots of brand new managers. So they are set up in a position to be successful. And, you know, they're learning everything that they have to do with regard to, you know, their role. And they also have to manage and motivate you guys, They'll motivate their team as well. So when it comes to you know, being confident and instilling that self-confidence, there are some things that I want you to consider. And the first is to simply you know, just be kind to yourself. So you know, we as, as, as just you know, people, individuals, can be really, really hard on ourselves. And we are sometimes a lot harder on ourselves than we are on others, whether it's direct reports, family, you know, whoever. And it's because we have high expectations of ourselves. And especially if you're a type A personality, oh my goodness, you have really high expectations that you feel like you should meet. And so we're not perfect and we never will be perfect. We as humans will never be perfect, but the key is to be able to learn from your mistakes and to make sure that, you know, we don't make them again. So, you know, forgive yourself if you make a mistake and recognize that you're not perfect and so be kind to yourself. The second thing that I want you to consider is to know what your leadership strengths and your weaknesses are. For example, you might be an awesome communicator. Everybody understands, you know, what your expectations are. They know that um, in the end that you are a great supporter of them. They may, you might be really good at delegating and truly empowering. You're great at time management, but maybe a weakness is um, avoiding conflict. A lot of people, you're not alone if you do. I have worked with several managers who tend to avoid conflict. And this is an area, obviously, that needs to be addressed if it is a weakness of yours to help you, you know, build that level of confidence so when something comes up, you can handle it. 
I mean, there are multiple ways. You can go take a conflict resolution course. You can um, get with a mentor who might be really good at it, and then they can share their insights. Whatever it is, learn. You know, learn from others. And then you, knowing what your strengths and your weaknesses are, always, you know, utilize those strengths. And then um, if, they're, if it's not a strength, then utilize somebody else who possesses that strength. All right, and that leads me to my third suggestion for you guys, and that is to ask for help. Like I said before, we are not great at everything. So if we're not good at something, then it is okay to ask for help. Don't feel threatened. You know, we have the ability to learn and grow, and we're all doing this. So when it comes to asking for help, believe it or not, when you do ask for help from somebody else, you are actually instilling confidence in them as well because you reached out. And that is a very cool thing. And then also, when you're asking for help, do not, like I said before, don't feel threatened because you reaching out shows that you are confident in your own abilities and in the strength of being that self-aware person. All right, tip four, look confident. I mean, if you don't feel confident, then how are you going to act confident? So when it comes to looking confident, look the person, whoever you're speaking to, in the eye. Do not have your head down. Do not be looking away because that is a sign of lack of confidence. So look them straight in the eye. Have a smile, that's always good. And then give a firm handshake. When you're meeting somebody and you're either being introduced or just you know acknowledging somebody and you're shaking their hand, give a firm handshake, please. Do not give a wimpy, limp handshake. Oh my goodness, that, I, I cannot stand that. I want a firm handshake because that to me exhibits confidence. All right, and then when it comes to, you know, what you're what you're wearing, what you're how you're dressed, make sure that, you know, you're not some slouch, you know, person who is a slob and oh yeah, I'm supposed to be, you know, they're supposed to be my boss, but they don't even look like they don't dress like they know what they're doing. So dress the part as well. And then, you know, have your shoulders back, straight back. Your straight is your back is straight. Um, you know, stand tall. You know, don't slump over and have your, like I said before, have your eyes down. That's just, it doesn't work. You're not helping yourself. You're actually looking like you don't know what the heck you're doing. And then it's obviously a sign of lack of confidence. All right. So the fifth is really, really, really important. And it is stop the negative self-talk. That negative self-talk like, Man, I screwed up. I could have, I could have, you know, communicated better to Bob to let him know what I really wanted. Or I can't believe I sent that email out and there were typos in it. Get rid of the negative self-talk. That is killing your mindset and your ability to think positively. So I want you to flip it. I want you to think positive, not negative. And to do that, one way you can do this is a great tool and that is affirmations. So the cool thing about affirmations is that one, they have to be in the first person. So you would start it off as I, and then they have to be in present tense, so I am. And then I want you to incorporate whatever it is that you're trying to improve upon. So for the purpose of this video, it's self-confidence. So you could say something, a perfect affirmation would be, I am an amazing self-confident boss. And when you say that, I mean, I just, I mean, I feel like uplifted. I really do. It, I feel like, you know, I am awesome. And so when you say things like that, and the key is repeating them, you've got to do this on a daily basis because if you just do it once, it's not gonna work. You have got to incorporate this into your daily routine. And I want you to also look at yourself in the mirror when you say this, because it's really hard, I believe, to lie to yourself when you're looking at the mirror. I mean, you you would be putting your eyes down if you don't believe it. So we're trying here to actually get you to believe 
these things, these, these qualities such as self-confidence. So I want you to be a believer in your ability to be self-confident as a boss. And with that is gonna come practice on a daily basis where you say your affirmation. It doesn't have to be the one I just said. It could be whatever you want it to be. And you can Google affirmations if you want because there's plenty of examples out there. But I am an amazing boss an amazing self-confident boss, I think is a really good one. So the key to confidence, I want you to really understand is that it's a state of mind and continued effort in this area of building your self-confidence will become essential and necessary if you are going to be that confident boss that I know each and every single one of you can be. So let's just quickly recap. The first thing that you can do to be a more confident uh, boss is to be kind to yourself. The second is to ask for help. The third is to, oh, the second one is to know your strengths and your weak leadership weaknesses. The third is to ask for help. The fourth is to look confident. And then the fifth is to stop the negative self-talk. All right, so, with that, I hope you found some great value in what I shared today on how you can be more confident as a boss. And if you like it, please like the button below. Don't forget to subscribe to, if you want more videos like this and get notified for them. And last but not least, I want you to go out and be that confident boss that your employees want to work for. All right, bye guys.